In this video, we are going to share with you some of the untold stories of the life of Reba McIntyre while we also show you some of her rare photos. Reba McIntyre is one of the most successful women in showbiz history. However, breaking into the industry was quite a challenge for her. And when she finally did, a tragic event happened that threatened to cut her life short right as she really got going. What exactly happened? Let's find out while showing you some of her rare photos. On March 28, 1955, in McAllister, Oklahoma, Reba Nell McIntyre was born to Clark McIntyre and Jacqueline McIntyre. She was raised on a ranch in Chalky, Oklahoma, alongside her three siblings. While her dad and grandfather were content with ranch life, her mother had aspirations of becoming a country singer. Unfortunately, Jacqueline had to settle for being a mere school teacher, librarian, and secretary. Reba had a tougher childhood than most kids her age. In addition to schoolwork, she had to chip into the cattle operation at the ranch. She and her siblings performed chores such as castrating bulls and giving them worm medicine. All of this served to give her a toughness that would aid her in the years to come. Despite how tough Reba was as a young girl, she was still a little child who needed the love of her parents. While her mother was always there for her, her father found it incredibly difficult to show his affection for her and her siblings. This took a terrible toll on Reba. As in her own words, I used to regret that daddy never told us he loved us. From all appearances, he loved the rodeo more than he loved his own children. This love for the rodeo was a double-edged sword in that while it alienated Clark's children from him, it also helped awaken their creative sparks. Reba's grandfather was a steer roping champion. Her father followed in his footsteps. In fact, it was during the long car rides to his rodeo dates that her mother taught her and her siblings to sing. As it turned out, they were quite talented performers. Following the awakening of this creative spark, Reba began to sing at school. Her performances were so good that they turned her into a sort of local superstar. In no time, she and her siblings formed a trio known as the Singing McIntyres. Reba did all this while also playing basketball, running track, and training as a barrel racer. As a trio, one of the Singing McIntyres' biggest hits was a song titled The Ballad of John McIntyre, which was about their famous grandfather. The song was so popular that it was distributed on a small scale by a local record label. This gave the McIntyres even more clout, allowing them to perform at various functions with a backing band. After renaming themselves the Kiowa High School Cowboy Band, they performed at bars and dance halls near Oklahoma City. In going through all this before graduating from high school, Reba gave herself vital training for her superstar future. Touring is not an easy task, and it takes real stamina to perform night after night. Reba eventually graduated high school, went to college, and graduated college with a degree in elementary education and music. Despite all this, she continued to help her family with their ranching business. Though Reba's father, Clark, had been quite distant from her throughout her life, he was well aware of her talent, so much so that he encouraged her to sing the Star Spangled Banner at the National Finals Rodeo. In a sense, this was his way of connecting to his daughter. Family friend and rodeo announcer Clem McSpadden helped her get hired for the gig. After one of her wonderful performances, Reba was noticed by none other than country artist Red Stagel, who was mightily impressed by her ability. Reba's mother, who smelled an opportunity, had her kids meet up with Stagel at a hotel party that same week. To further entice him, Reba performed a version of Dolly Parton's Joshua. Jacqueline then asked him if he could use his country music star clout to land the kids a recording contract. Stegall, who had so suddenly been put on the spot, didn't give Jacqueline an answer right away. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until he returned to Nashville that Stegall hit Jacqueline up. He told her that, unfortunately, he could not uplift all her kids to stardom. However, he added, he might have something for Jacqueline, who had a special aura about her. So began the legend of Reba McIntyre, right? Wrong. There's one last twist to this tale. See, after being handed such a huge opportunity on the platter, Reba was overcome with an irrational fear. Sensing everything she had worked so hard for slipping away, her mom, Jacqueline, told her that they didn't have to go to Nashville if she didn't want to. However, she also added, I'm living all my dreams through you. This completely changed Reba's mind, giving her the courage to go to Nashville. So began the legend of Reba McIntyre. Even after being signed to a huge record label, it took Reba McIntyre almost 10 years for her career to really get going. But once she hit that point, there was no stopping her. She is known as the Queen of Country for a very good reason, having sold more than 75 million records worldwide. However, 
there was a scary event early in her career that almost cut her legend short. Reba's career has lasted almost 50 years now. 15 years into it though, she had a brush with death. Some people say success is a double-edged sword, bringing with it as many misfortunes as blessings. Nothing illustrates this point more than this episode in Reba's career. See, what happened was, in the late 80s, she had become so successful that touring by bus was becoming a headache. As a result, she and her entire team decided to start using private jets. This made sense, as private jets would help her and her band get around quicker while leaving them less tired. Besides, she was earning so much now that she could afford multiple private jets as a business expense. During the 1991 leg of Reba's tour, she was scheduled to perform in Alaska, Michigan, and Indiana. However, she had to make a stop in San Diego for a fancy little IBM party. On leaving San Diego, Reba and her team decided to take three planes. The first two planes would take off around the same time and would carry most of her band. Reba, her husband, and her hairdresser would follow the next day on another plane. That night, while Reba and her husband were asleep, they were woken up by Roger Woolsey, the pilot of the second plane. He broke the shocking news to Reba that one of the planes had crashed. Reba was devastated to discover that eight members of her band, Chris Austin, Kirk Capello, Joey Siganero, Paula K. Evans, Jim Hammond, Terry Jackson, Anthony Saputo, and Michael Thomas had been killed. Both pilots, Donald Holmes and Chris Hollinger, were deceased as well. The utter devastation of this event set Reba's entire career upside down. She wasn't even given time to grieve properly and had to make several public statements about this tragic loss. Based on an investigation conducted by the National Transportation Safety Board, the crash was the fault of the two pilots who had not done their due diligence ahead of the flight. The official cause of the crash was ruled as improper pilot planning. What happened was that the pilots had failed to account for the shifting terrain beneath them, particularly for the presence of Otai Mountain in San Diego. As a result, their plane crashed into the side of the mountain, receiving critical structural damage. There was no chance of escape for anyone involved. Following this tragic event, Reba canceled her tour and returned to Nashville. The media circus died down a little, finally giving her a chance to grieve in peace. For Reba, the weight of all those lost lives was heavy in her heart. However, there was also the unavoidable question of what would have happened had she been on the plane that went down. Reba was helped back into recovery by the incredible support system around her. This included her close friends and family. In addition, Dolly Parton and Vince Gill offered to help her put a band back together. While these were kind gestures, the greatest step toward recovery would be taken by Reba herself. Reba dedicated her 16th studio album, For My Broken Heart, to the deceased members of her band. Most of the songs were intensely sorrowful. The album was a smash hit, becoming Reba's highest charting release on the Billboard 200 at number 13. It also sold 4 million copies in the US, becoming her highest selling album at the time. With a net worth of almost $100 million, Reba McIntyre is one of the most successful showbiz personalities in the world. Though she is approaching her 70s, it's fair to say that she has several years left to share her gifts with the world. On top of being one of the greatest country singers of all time, she's also a successful actor and businesswoman. She will forever be the queen of country. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.